Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're not, welcome back. Today we have a very fun Q&A video planned. I asked you guys over on my Instagram if you guys had any questions for me, send them in, and I got an overwhelming amount of questions sent in, like 800 questions. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get through all of them, but I'm gonna get through as many as possible and just be prepared for a long video. I know you guys like long videos because you can crochet to them, so I am going to be crocheting alongside with you while I answer these questions. Um, I will be working on a Etsy order that I just got last night. Um, comment down below what you're gonna be crocheting while you watch this video and let's get right into it. What's my least favorite thing to crochet? This one's actually a really easy one to answer. Anything amigurumi. I hate crocheting in the round over and over, literally doing the same 32 single crochets over and 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 over, and over again. I cannot stand it. I'm a much more like slip stitch chain one to end around kind of girl. Although I do think continuous rounds look better, but anyway, anything amigurumi, anything non so oh no anything so amigurumi um if i'm doing amigurumi it has to be like no so amigurumi because i do not like sewing the arms and legs onto the body after the fact because i can never get them to look the same and i always feel like they're off so that is my least favorite thing to crochet my favorite hook size is a five millimeter honestly i think it's like what i work with the most it just feels like perfect you know and when I need to go up a little I do 5.5 but that's just because I work with acrylic like weight 4 yarn the most so I think that's probably why my favorite hook size is 5 millimeter I used to like bigger hook sizes but no how did you get into or start crocheting also I love your videos thank you um I got into crocheting in high school I want to say it was 2017 2018 I was like 16 or 17 years old when I started crocheting and I honestly think I got into it just because I was an anxious girl okay and I still am but back then like I needed an outlet for all of my like anxious fidgetiness and I found crochet and I've been doing it ever since are you or have you been in a relationship I am not currently in a relationship at the moment. I have been in relationships before. And yeah, that's about it. I mean, as far as relationships go, I'm so focused on myself and what I'm doing at like all times that when I do think of starting a relationship, I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, now what? Because I'm not doing a dating app. Like I rather, well, I can't say that, but I just rather not. You know what I mean? Like if any, if any of you have been on a Princess is talking to the birds. If any of you have been on a dating app recently, you know what I mean, but it is literally the trenches out here. So, no. How do I start an Etsy shop? International shipping, how do I start the shop, etc. Um, my best advice for any of you who are wanting to start an Etsy shop is to just start one. Um, as far as international shipping goes, it's like, it's really easy. You can have your customer pay international shipping you can literally just tweak the settings and have it calculate shipping per order. So when someone orders something, it does all the work for you and it charges them however much it's going to cost to send to them. So like Etsy is the best place to kind of deal with shipping. I mean, I haven't really had any issues. The only issue I've ran into when it comes to shipping is that oh, I'm losing my rings. The only issue I've had when it comes to shipping is I did get an order from an, uh, someone in another country and I made the order and I went to go ship it out and I went to go hit the print shipping label button and it wouldn't click. And I was like, okay, weird. And I found out that Etsy does not ship to that country. So I'm like, what I didn't understand is why did Etsy let her make the order if they knew they weren't going to let me ship it to her? And that kind of annoyed me because I made the entire, I crocheted the entire order. It was a hat like this one. I had crocheted the entire thing and I went to go pack it up and it literally was like yeah we well, don't ship to this country i'm like okay well then why did you let her order it from that country it doesn't make sense like anyway it was stupid but the other problem i have with etsy is i crocheted a 120 dollar mouse suitcase order okay i sent it to the customer and she claimed she never got it so not only did she and then and then she filed and she opened a case with me on Etsy like a law case 
with me on Etsy saying that she never received her order. So Etsy gave her a full refund and she got to keep the $120 80 hours of work mouse suitcase I had crocheted basically for free because I had to refund her and she got to keep it because guess what it showed up on her door a day after she put the claim in and the only reason she put the claim in was because it took longer than she expected although on all of my listings I'm very transparent on how long things take and those ones take forever to make so the listing was very clear and it was not late I sent it out on time but she just thought it was too long so she filed a case in Etsy settled and gave her a refund so that annoyed me um and then when I messaged her about it I was like um you're literally supposed to receive it tomorrow and you just got a refund for it I'm like can you send it back to me since you didn't pay for it and she was like no so that's a reason I would think of other things other than Etsy but other than that like and mind you I have almost 2,000 orders sales I guess on Etsy so if that's like my only real issue then it's probably not too bad do you ever lose inspiration or motivation and what do you do to help with it um I lose motivation slash inspiration all the time like I feel like I'm more in a rut like motivationally than I am ever actually like the amount compared to the amount I crochet but what I do when I'm not feeling motivated or I'm lacking inspiration is I just take a break step away from your project step away from whatever you're doing or whatever you just finished don't do anything just chill honestly scroll pinterest scroll instagram look at other people's crochet related stuff look at other people's paintings look at other people's videos like literally just consume art consume media consume content from other creative people and somewhere along the line you'll get a spark of inspiration you'll be like oh actually I want to do this or actually oh you know what I'm gonna go do this like it's just just stop it's kind of like finding your muse I guess just take a break watch other people be creative for a little bit you know what I mean which crochet item took you the longest to make um I think the crochet item that took me the longest to make has got to be probably that dress video I did the um crocheting a fairy dress pattern review I think that one took a very long time. That takes a long time. The mouse in a suitcase orders I do take a long time. But I think those are the longest. I can't think of anything else that I've done that was like bigger. Honestly, that mushroom cap I did a long time ago for the Ren Fair video, that one took a long time. It's just like really thick and there's a lot of detail. So maybe that one's up there with the other ones, but I can't think of anything that might have taken me longer. My favorite crocheted piece. Oh, that's hard. I really love that mushroom cap I did, like a long time ago, the hat. Ah, uh, what else? Oh, okay, I really love the cake tissue box cover. That's one of my favorites, definitely. Recently, I've been crocheting ponchos and like, I love that. It's hard because my favorite changes, I feel like every time I make something new i'm like oh my god this is the best thing i've ever made in my entire life so that's a hard question have you watched supernatural i've started it a couple times here and there uh i can never really get past a couple episodes i don't know what it is i think it's because i'm a vampire diaries girl that like when i watch supernatural i'm like oh this is like nothing compared to vampire diaries so it's hard for me to get into it how old are you i am 23 years old as of last week my birthday happened and i am now 23 years old. Do you do YouTube full-time? I do YouTube full-time. I also have another part-time job and I'm going back to school um, at the moment. I'm looking for schools to go back to um, to get my master's in marriage and family therapy. How are you doing lately? I hope you're doing amazing. I am doing good, honestly. Better. I had, I went to an Airbnb like cabin kind of setup for my birthday last week and honestly it was literally like seven days of nothing i just relaxed i read books i did nothing i played in snow i saw snowfall for the first time it was very there's a hair tickling me it was very relaxing and like exactly what i needed i was feeling so stressed and so burnt out and going and doing nothing for seven days is just like 
it's exactly what I needed. When are you going to continue the crochet ideas by color? I really want one in blue and yellow. Okay, so about the crochet idea videos, you guys, and I am going to do more, obviously, um, but they have kind of taken on a different shape than they were before. I used to be able to give you guys 50 ideas, like bam, 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 bam. Not even if I hadn't done all 50 of them, like I was still giving you guys those patterns and stuff. And that was super fun and I love doing that. Um, but unfortunately, someone um, copyrighted one of my videos because I used their picture in my video without asking. And it's just, I and I lost that, I almost got a copyright strike on, the, on my entire channel because of that one picture amongst the 50 pictures that was linked directly to her shop. Um, and I just can't risk, like, this is how I make my money, and I can't risk someone copywriting a picture and me losing that entire video, or losing my channel, because you only get three copyright strikes and you're out. So I can't risk losing my channel. Um, so they've kind of shifted into more of a, I show you crochet projects that I've done and give you the patterns for them, so that I can use my non-copyrighted photos for those things because I'm just, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm sorry, I know I love those videos too. Um, maybe in the future. And I know, like, if I went to every single 50 pe all 50 people of every 50 ideas video and asked them permission to use their picture, it would take so long and I wouldn't get a response from everybody. So like, imagine tracking down that free pattern you found on Pinterest from like 2014 and trying to track the creator down and ask if you can take a picture from their pattern, like their item picture and put it in your video for literally four seconds and then have to explain to them what your channel is about, what the video is about, what the video is going to be doing, that I'm going to be linking their thing and then wait for a response and then get a response from 50 people. Like I'm not doing that. So as of right now, unless something changes like or I just feel ballsy I won't be doing videos like that how long did it take to become advanced in crochet okay well I've been crocheting for I guess since 2017 I want to say 2016 but let's just say 2017 so 17 18 19 20 and we're on 24 now so one two three four I guess I've been crocheting for eight or nine years I don't know at what point I became like advanced so I mean how long did it take I don't know years <laughs> like I don't know just keep it doesn't matter just keep crocheting like it doesn't matter so someone asked me what kind of teaching do you want to go into and um, last time you guys heard about like my career and college wise I was getting my teaching license and that has changed um, a little update on my life when it comes to my career outside of YouTube and my education. Um, I got my bachelor's in psychology. I graduated a year and a half early. Um, congrats. Yay. Um, and then I originally I wanted to go into um, therapy as a psychology major. That was my goal. I wanted to go into therapy. And after I graduated, COVID happened um, towards the end of my my last year of college, which was really only my second and a half year, I guess, um, or my beginning of my third year, because I did graduate early, COVID happened and I got really just confused and um, I knew I liked working with kids and I just, I don't know how it happened, but I kind of got shifted down the road of becoming a teacher and um, I had someone in my family, friends, that went to the school I went to for teaching and was like, oh, you should do it. Like, it's really affordable. You can get it done as fast as you want and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, that sounds more doable than going back to school for therapy right now because I knew we were like in COVID. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, let me just get into it. So I started the program. I finished, um, my original program was a master's in education with my teaching credential. And I had finished the master's part, and then it was just time for the credential part. So the three months of unpaid student teaching. And I started student teaching. I got my, like, my 
classroom, I guess, uh, in a first grade class. Honestly, up until that point, I was like back and forth with teaching because I started substitute teaching and I was like, oh God, I do not know if this is for me. But at that point, I'm like, what else am I going to do? Like the time's going to pass anyway. I might as well finish my degree. So I did and I did student, um, I started like my observation stuff. And I was in, that was when I was in the classroom, like, with another teacher, doing teacher things. And that was my moment where I was like, oh, I do not want to do this. This is not what I want to do. And it was so visceral. And I literally was talking to my mentor teacher. And I asked her, I was like, okay, I was like, did you have, like, a moment where you were like, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do? Or did you constantly feel like you didn't know if this is what you wanted to do? And she was like, oh, I knew. I knew. And she was talking about how many hours she spends outside of contract hours and how passionate she is about education. And here's the thing, I love working with kids, but I did not have the passion for teaching education, like teaching these kids how to read, how to write. Like I didn't have that, that passion there, but I loved working with kids. So I was like, okay. And while I was doing all this, even through classes, I was like, God, I miss psychology like I miss my psychology classes those are the only classes I like really loved when I was getting my bachelor's were my psych classes and I missed it I was like this is not I thought teaching was gonna make was gonna be enough of me using psychology to like it and it just wasn't it was like way more education than actually using anything psych psychology wise and child development wise so I finished my master's I got my master's in educational studies and I dropped the teaching license credentials. So I am not licensed to teach in the state of California. I do have a master's in educational studies. I did graduate with that um, a couple, a month ago, yeah, and last month I graduated with that. So I am out of school at the moment, but I have decided, I decided this when I quit teaching, um, I decided I am gonna go back for my marriage and family therapy license, which, and master's degree which was the original plan that kind of got derailed a little bit with COVID and all of those things so I am in the process of finding a school right now and applying and things like that so does that answer your question <laughs> how's your cat I have three cats four in the house three of them are mine one of them is Dylan's they're all perfectly fine they're all they're so cute they're very cuddly they're having a great time. What's your absolute favorite thing to crochet? Ooh, that's hard. My favorite thing to crochet? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Honestly, I like crochet. Cro oh my god, I can't talk. I like crocheting these hats just because they're so mindless. Like, I can do this while talking to you. You know what I mean? I'd say crochet these hats. I also like crocheting um, things that don't... I don't have... Things that I don't have to sew or weave a lot of ends in so anything like that i like crocheting i don't have like a single item what's your favorite genre of music to listen to this is easy okay i like 70s music i like i don't know i like everything i like 70s music i like um what you would consider sad girl music like mitski phoebe bridgers things like that um i'm a sad girl oh lana del rey okay i'm a sad girl listener i love everything that you're like oh Tortured Sad Girl music, that's me. Um, and then of course like Fleetwood Mac, like that, you know, stuff like that. I'm trying to not curse so I don't get demonetized, but <laughs> stuff like that, okay? And also early 2000s. Like I love a good Britney, love good Fergie, love good Black Eyed Peas moment. It really just depends. When I'm on the treadmill, early 2000s is the vibe. When I am swimming, I love Lana Del Rey and Fleetwood Mac. And when I am doing anything else, like homework or reading or vibing, it's sad girl music, okay? What do you do when you get uninspired during a long project that you really want to finish? Uh, take a break. Literally walk away from it. Step away, put your hook down, go watch a movie, go watch YouTube, go watch literally anything else. Just step away from it, okay? Let yourself miss crocheting. That's like my biggest tip for people who are like I can't stay motivated it's like well that's probably because you don't stop crocheting um literally just stop go take a break walk away go watch something else go do something else do it until you're like oh I miss crocheting then go back to it there you go what was the hardest thing about 
starting an Etsy for you. Um, hardest thing for me, honestly, was product photos. Like, taking pictures of the stuff to post. I don't know why that was the hardest thing for me to do, but it was so difficult. Like, I, I couldn't do it. I, like, I couldn't get lighting right. I couldn't get, like, product placement right. And for a while, nothing was selling, and then I would take new pictures of stuff, and then things started selling, so I'm like, I knew it was my pictures, you know? I just cannot figure out good... I mean, I feel like I've come a long way since I first started, but when I first started, I had no idea how to take pictures of my stuff that was flattering and, like, would basically get it to sell, if that makes sense. Would you rather only knit for the rest of your life or only crochet? That's an easy one. Crochet. I like knitting, but it takes too long. I am an instant gratification kind of girl, so definitely crochet. How old were you when you first started crocheting? 16, maybe 17. I don't know off the top of my head. Have you ever been in a relationship with a girl? I have not been in a relationship with a girl, but I have my fair share of experiences in that department but I have not been in a relationship, like relationship with a girl. Does that answer, does that answer your question? <laughs> What's your favorite type of yarn? Uh, my favorite, like, oh, okay. I love the True Boo bamboo yarn, but the one I use, the yarn I use the most is Acrylic Weight 4 Red Heart Super Saver just because it's affordable and a majority of the stuff I make is weight four and the true boo yarn is like weight three or two so I rarely use it but I love the way it feels and I love the garments that I can make out of it like it's just so flowy and lightweight so that's my favorite but I don't use it as much as I want to how many languages do you speak uh English I'm learning French and Korean uh, I took French in high school so my French is better than my Korean um, and I did learn a lot of sign language for like a year, but I'm not fluent in anything other than English. So yeah, but I would love to be fluent in French, uh, Korean, American sign language and Japanese before I die. That's the goal. How did you get started with your Etsy and the whole business thing? Um, literally it's going to sound really stupid, but you just start like, I feel like the people who never start and the people who do have businesses, it's the difference between the people who talk about starting and talk about wanting to start one and talk about how do I do this, how do I do that, compared to the people who just start it. So my advice to you is don't ask any more questions and just go do it. Like, the only way you're going to learn how to start an Etsy is if you start an Etsy. No amount of questions I answer or other people online answer are going to help you. Just start and you will learn as you go. I feel like... As women especially, I don't know if you're a woman, but as women especially, we have this habit, and there was studies on this, okay? I'm not just talking off the cuff. We have this habit of needing to have everything perfect and lined up and exactly how it's supposed to be before we ever start anything. And that is why we don't get as far as we should. It's because we have this like perfectionism curse embedded in us because we're constantly under scrutiny and that's like okay but we need to just sometimes if you catch yourself spending days and months planning something out or trying to get something perfect before you ever hit start just start it okay men fail upwards because they just start shit they don't stop and plan it out they don't get it all perfect they just start things and they learn as they go and they fall and they get back up and they fall and they fail upwards okay that's what I'm gonna start doing this year failing upwards no more spending time trying to be perfect just start just start I think that is what we just have to do we were living in a man's world okay so start trying to fail upwards it's my opinion just go start your Etsy shop any confidence tips for starting a YouTube love your videos uh confidence tip for you for starting a youtube um just recognize that no one cares uh no one cares what you look like what you're doing no one cares be comfortable with the fact that for the first probably years uh no one's gonna watch so your confidence should just honestly the easiest time to post videos is when no one's watching so just have fun with it 
that's my advice have fun with it gain confidence by posting just post just start posting your confidence will get better and then at some point you wake up and you literally will not care what you look like or anything so just start posting how much should i set aside to begin my crochet business um nothing for one use yarn you already have there boom free girl math um and the only like amount of money i really had to spend for my crochet business was like shipping supplies so you're gonna need like poly mailers or something but even with that i didn't even spend money on that in the beginning you can get free stuff so go to usps.com order free poly mailer bags or boxes or whatever and they'll just ship to you for free so do that for your shipping material and then um the only money you like have to have to need if you're using etsy in order to post a listing it's like 20 cents i think to post a listing it's not a lot so you really only need i'd say like five bucks to start an etsy okay um just use your free resources like usps.com and if you go here's a little hack for you actually you can get like your first 40 listings free go to etsy search free listing code or whatever people will put up like a listing with a free code or you pay like 99 cents for a listing a digital download and it's a code to give you your first 40 listings free i did that uh for i've started multiple etsy's in my in my past lifetime okay um and I did that every single time I started one. So that's a little hack for you. Go search 40 listing free code and use that code and get your first 40 listings free. Then you really don't need any money to start an Etsy shop. How do you price your items? I feel like I've talked about this before, but the brief version is I price my items by labor times the minimum wage, okay? Um, I don't usually do materials cost unless the materials cost, you know what I mean? Like. If I'm making like a little amigurumi that literally took less than half a skein, I don't even count material costs because the skein's usually like $3. So it just doesn't make sense to count that for me. But if you're doing a big blanket, I would count every skein as material cost plus labor times minimum wage. And like that's what I would charge. Now, with that being said, if I do the math and something ends up being outrageous, like mouse in a suitcase okay on my shop right now i think they're up for sale for like 90 dollars. okay for a while i had them at 120 um and i move it all the time just basing on the season and how things are going um on my shop but 120 is like way below what i should charge if it were minimum wage times hours of labor because i think it takes like 30 hours to make that so right there, you have over $300, you know what I mean? So, but I know no one's going to pay upwards of $400 for a mouse and a suitcase toy. So I just be realistic. Sometimes I have to undersell myself, but at the same time, I think, yes, I did spend a lot of hours on it, but I also got to watch all my favorite TV shows and be in my pajamas. So I'm like, I feel like if I was like in uncomfortable clothes and I just had to stare at a wall while I crocheted, then yeah, I'd want to get all my money. But I get to be comfortable. I get to watch things. I get to listen to audiobooks. I don't feel entitled to charging myself minimum wage sometimes just because I'm like, I had fun and I made a video out of it. You know what I mean? So it's really up to you how you price your stuff, but that's how I price mine. What are your favorite videos to make? My favorite videos to make are vlogs. Uh, I like crochet with me's. I like testing out pattern books, testing out patterns I buy on Etsy, and just kind of taking you guys along with me. Those are my favorite. I love those way more than tutorials and even the crochet idea videos. Like, I love vlogs a lot more. I want to start a YouTube channel. How did you start and when? I started my YouTube channel when I was like 12. Uh, <laughs> 12 or 13. Um, and I just started. I, I bought a like $50 camcorder um used from my dad and i just started making videos you just start you know i didn't have a care in the world those videos have since been privated definitely um and i've had like multiple channels and they've all been privated uh and i actually found a little sd card from like my very first youtube video ever um back when i hit 10,000 on here and it's so funny but literally my advice to you is just to start and when did i start i started when i was like 13 i started like 2014 
during the Tumblr era, during the era of like, oh wait, you can actually be a YouTuber as a career era. How tall are you? You give like tall 5'9 energy. I have heard that so many times. So many people have been like, you give tall girl energy, you give 5'9 energy. I'm 5'4 y'all, barely. So I don't know where y'all get that, but I, I understand it. Cause even I take pictures of myself and I'm like, mm, I'm giving tall girl energy. I'm not tall. Um, although I wish I was born tall. I wish I was born very like leggy and you know. Has anyone ever criticized you for having hobbies like crochet or said anything weird about it? I have had matches on dating apps, which I no longer use because they drain me. Um, but I've had matches be like, oh, you like granny hobbies. And I'm like, okay. Okay, and? <laughs> it's funny, like, sometimes I forget. Sometimes I, I think men don't use their brain. It's like you're insulting a girl's hobby something she spends a lot of time doing you're insulting it and expecting to get a date out of it weird if you could meet any celebrity alive or dead who would it be okay i have three i have three i want to meet actually no four uh five norman reedus jeffrey dean morgan andrew lincoln pedro pascal um and who else who else who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, the guy who plays the Punisher in the Punisher show and also Shane in Walking Dead. I forget his name. I want to meet all those people. Alone in a room, naked. But in the more PG version, I'd like to meet Mitski. How do you start crocheting without a pattern? This answer is gonna sound stupid, but you just do it. So, you just start, but a good way to kind of get you started is you have your- okay, so you have your idea. You get a sketchbook, draw what you're trying to crochet, then draw another drawing with the basic shapes of what you're trying to crochet and then crochet those shapes, okay? That's kind of the easiest way to break it down, I guess. Do you ever go through periods where you're tired of crocheting? Yes, all the time. Girl, if I, uh, this is my job, okay? I crochet 24-7, 365, okay? Literally all the time. If I'm not crocheting personal stuff or Etsy stuff, I'm crocheting for a video. So yes, I do get tired all the time. Also, look at the little progress we have going on. Look at the progress we have going on on our, uh, on our hat. We've got a lot of rows down. So, next question. Why you're weird? Um, first of all, I don't think this is grammatically correct, but who's saying? I think this is supposed to be mean, but my answer to this question is I'd rather be weird than boring. And the world has plenty of boring people, you and I both know, so I'd rather be weird. What happened to your crochet market? I don't know if I missed something, but I hope I didn't miss it. You did not miss my market. Uh, it actually got delayed. It was supposed to be in March. Yes, it was supposed to be in March. Um, but it ended up pouring rain on that day, so she actually just canceled it. And she was having a later market happening in May. May, I think it's May 19th. I don't know, I think it's May 19th. Um, and she asked me if I wanted to move my... Because I did put a deposit down for a table. So she asked me if I wanted to move my deposit to the May one because she wasn't doing refunds because of weather. So I was like, okay, I guess. Um, so I moved my deposit to the May event. So I do have a market still coming up. It is in May. Um, so yes, that is still happening. It just got delayed a lot. So, But it kind of worked out because I did not have enough stuff made to even handle the market. So... It was kind of like a little blessing in disguise moment. What's your best selling item on your shop? These Nanami hats, the hat I'm making right now. Um, I feel like I consistently have orders for this. So yeah, definitely my best selling item on my shop. Where's your favorite place to buy clothes? I love your sense of style. Thank you. Um, a majority of my stuff is thrifted or uh, Depop. So like either thrifted, either thrifted in person thrifted from thread up which is like a company not sponsored which is like a company i wish they'd sponsor me because i've seen them sponsor youtubers before so get me on that list um but thread up is like a online thrifting and then um i also use depop which i try not to use depop because the depop girlies be cutthroat okay and they are trying to get as much money out of me as possible but um all of my clothes are secondhand unless they were gifted to me so if i'm wearing something um that's not secondhand it's usually a gift i got for christmas or something 
but I try really hard to buy secondhand stuff like this I'm wearing is from Depop this is from ThreadUp um yeah even my jewelry like this stuff is from Etsy shops uh this is from a little crystal shop in my town and this was from a small jewelry making shop small business online so i definitely try to shop from small businesses nostril or septum piercing see if you can help with my doubtful ass i love your videos so i actually um i had a nostril like a nose piercing since i was eight since i turned 18 to i'd say like 22 i just recently took it out a little less than a year ago um because it was just like always bothering me and i was always getting it like hung on things and I, ugh, it was just uncomfortable so I took it out to just let it um, breathe for a little bit and then I loved my face without it and I my face just felt way more symmetrical without it in my nose and I decided to not put it back in so the hole has now closed but I did have a nostril piercing um, I've never had a septum but my vote is nostril I just think they're so cute I think they're more cute than septums but I have nothing against septums so my vote is nostril because I did hear septum piercings like always have this weird faint smell of cheese and i think that's kind of gross so i vote nostril how do you advance in crochet any tips to better your skills my tip is crochet something that you think is out of your range so if you look at something and you're like oh that looks way too hard for me crochet it that's the only way you're gonna up your skill if that makes sense what piece made you want to start crocheting um actually it's really funny it's this little grim reaper piece i did for dylan um i either i found it or they found it and they were like can you make me this because i made a blanket and then i was like oh i can do anything now and um they showed me that and wanted it and i actually learned a lot from making that as like my first project other than the blanket i made um so yeah the little tiny grim reaper how do you find a balance between school etsy and youtube etc um honestly i don't think i've ever found the balance i think i'm kind of just taking one day at a time but something that really does help me is planning everything out like i'm a planner girly i will be a planner girly till the day i die um i have different things highlighted so like in my planner i'll have youtube highlighted with one color homework highlighted with another color uh work that's not youtube like my other job highlighted with another color so it's kind of like i keep it all separated and planned out and that is the only way i really keep sane so i guess that's how i balance it <laughs> how do you get into start sewing would you ever make sewing tutorials oh how did i get into it uh i just started i use my mom's sewing machine i don't even have my own sewing machine um but she doesn't use hers so like i just use it um and take care good care of it but i just started because i uh wanted to i just found something I wanted it I wanted it and I was like well I could make it and I just started crocheting I mean started sewing so um, would I make sewing tutorials probably as of right now all of like my sewing stuff is based off of other people's tutorials and patterns so I don't really have a reason to like make tutorials I did just recently create my own like pattern and like sewing tutorial like basically I didn't use a tutorial or a pattern to make these um, tarot card deck wraps that are on my etsy right now if you want one they're on my etsy if you want to go buy one just saying but i did not use a tutorial for those or a pattern I, I drew my own pattern up and everything on paper so if anybody was interested in learning how to make those tarot deck wraps um i could make a tutorial for that but as of right now i just don't have enough like original ideas and original stuff other than that one to make tutorials so plus you guys haven't really shown an interest in sewing tutorials so i haven't really put a lot of time into it um because at the end of the day this is like my work my job so i do like to go off what you guys want to see um sometimes i'll do a little passion video in there but other than that i mostly just do what you guys want to see what are some other hobbies you have um i like to read i'm learning how to knit i like language learning i am writing a book right now which is so exciting um i've had this book idea for so long and i'm in the process of writing it i'm actually going to be doing like a write with me kind of like vlog moment over on the book channel so if you aren't subscribed over there and you're interested in something like that 
go check it out. I did notice a lot of you guys commenting saying you should start a book channel. I do have a book channel. I already started one. So if you want to go sub, go sub. But um, I'm going to be doing a kind of like writing my book kind of little vlog series over there. Because I feel like it's more book related reading content than it is creative crochet content. So Oh, and I recently started gardening. I started a garden a couple weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. So I also garden as well as a hobby. But that doesn't take up all my time because plants grow slow. How do you find craft markets to sell at? My number one tip for you is going to be Facebook. That's where I find all of mine. I just search pop-ups in my area or there's like a, usually a group in your area. Like I live in Fresno. Uh, so I search like Fresno vendors and then you join a vendors group and it's just people basically saying like, hey, my event needs vendors. My event needs food vendors. My event needs craft vendors. And that's how you find them. What happened to the podcast? The podcast is not dead. It's just we had to take a break because Dylan is still in high school. They're senior. They're graduating in May, I think. But um, yeah, we had to like take a little pause because finals week was happening and my parents are very like school comes first, which makes sense. So everybody was stressed out. I had a lot going on with my YouTube channel. I was stressed out with school and YouTube. So we just decided to take a little break until we get closer to graduation for them. I just lost my ring. <laughs> um, so as we get closer to their graduation and their stuff kind of lets up and they're mostly just like really doing nothing at school, the podcast will come back. So stay tuned. But at the end of the day, education is more important than our podcast. So how do you promote what you sell on Etsy? Um, for a while I was doing TikToks, but honestly TikToks are just annoying me but after a certain point when you have a certain amount of sales on your etsy it kind of just generates its own like money i guess if that makes sense like once i passed a thousand sales on etsy i feel like etsy was pushing my stuff to the top more so you really only have to do a lot of the marketing in the beginning and then it kind of does it itself but i would recommend doing tiktok that's where i get a majority of my sales from have you ever had a nose piercing if not you should totally get one I just answered the other question, but I have. I had a nose piercing for a long time, um, and I just don't like facial piercings anymore. I feel like I feel cleaner without them, uh, but I think they're really nice on other people. So I'm not anti-piercing. I just been there, done that, and I don't want to deal with a piercing in my face like anytime soon. Have you have you first when you first started crocheting? Did all your hands hurt for like months after? Yes. Um, that is when I learned the importance of taking breaks. So definitely stop and take a break, okay? More than you think you should. So I usually stop and take a break every like 30 minutes to an hour. It really depends. Like stuff like this, it's such like a loose, mindless like motion that it doesn't really hurt. But when I'm working with small yarn and small hooks, I feel like my hands cramp up more. I think it's just because they're like closer together and like squished together. So it just depends on what you're making. But the moment you feel your hands starting to hurt, it's too late. You should have taken a break earlier. So just take breaks, okay? What does steaming do for crochet clothes? Okay, so steaming loosens fibers. So if you've ever seen literally any of my videos where I steam a garment, before you kind of notice that things are like stiff and boxy. If you ever crochet something and you put it on, you're like, it just feels boxy you need to steam it steaming it gives it kind of more of like a flow feeling like flow clothes like like a piece of clothing should feel okay um and when it's not steamed it's just kind of boxy and like kind of like a blanket like it doesn't feel nice are you religious i understand if this is too personal I'm not here to judge just curious um i would say i'm not religious in a sense of like organized religion like christianity or catholicism or things like that um, I'm, I'm not in like an organized religion. Um, I would consider myself Wiccan, which is like under the umbrella term of pagan. So whether you want to call it pagan, Wiccan, whatever, that's kind of like where I'm at. I'm more uh, spiritual than religious, if that makes sense. How do you hold your crochet hook? Um, like this. Let me see if I can show you. I, you know, I just hold it. Actually, wait. I'll take it out I hold it like this now I have seen people try and crochet like this like a pencil and I 
I just can't do it. Like, I can't figure it out. I feel like I'm like twisting my wrist more that way. Like, at least with this way, I just kind of like grab it on top. At least with this way, I just feel like it's more movement on my left hand to wrap the yarn. And my right hand kind of just stays the same. And that's how I avoid my wrist hurting at the end of long projects. Um, how do I weave in my ends? I'm scared to do anything involving sewing in a needle. So there are a lot of ways to weave in your ends. You don't necessarily have to like sew them in. Um, I like to weave them in with a crochet needle, which is basically like a bigger version of a sewing needle that fits yarn into it. I don't know how to explain it. You can get metal ones or plastic ones, but I weave in randomly. It's kind of chaotic. It doesn't really have a system. I just kind of take the yarn and I weave it against into the stitches and that's that. But there are other ways to do it. Some people are a little more chaotic and they just tie a double knot and snip it off, which to each their own. I would freak out. I can't do that. Um, and some people do felting, which basically from my understanding, I've never done it this way, but you put like a sponge or something behind your work and you take a felting needle and you just like jab it in and out over and over until the fibers kind of mesh together. Now, I have seen people swear by that method. Like, they swear by felting it in and I have never tried it, but now that I've seen how much people like really like it, I think I might consider doing it. Um, but yeah, just search up like felting, weaving in ends, um, literally just search up all the ways you can weave in an end. There's a bunch, probably more than I even listed. Favorite celebrity DILF, anyone 40 plus? <laughs> yeah, I definitely have a lot. I have a huge painting of my three favorite DILFs at the moment. Um, Dylan, Dylan drew it for me. Andrew Lincoln, Norman Reedus, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I also love Pedro Pascal and the guy, which I will not remember his name, but um, the guy who plays Shane in Walking Dead and also the Punisher series on Disney Plus. Um, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this one, you know what? I'm gonna have them translate it for me. What do you have to say? Mm-hmm. Yep. And that is all the questions that I'm going to be answering in this video. If I didn't answer a question, feel free to comment down below and I'll answer it in the comment section. This is how far we got in the span of this video on our hat. Um, other than that, if you like my content and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Like this video if you liked it. I will see you in the next video. Bye!